Welcome to another episode of our review of the adult Sabbath school lesson. In this episode, we are looking at crucibles of purification. Let us pray. Loving Father, eternal God, as we come to you now, we ask that your Holy Spirit will lead and direct us as we open your word. Bless us to this end, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So... We have been looking at the different forms of crucibles for this week's lesson. And just a f quick week recap, we looked at crucibles of Satan, um, where we mentioned that Satan is roaring around like a roaring wild lion. lion. Mm -hmm. And because he exists in this world of sin, there are certain things that will happen as a consequence of that. Then we looked at Tuesday's lesson, crucibles of sin where the lesson pointed out that there are sometimes we bring about certain consequences as a result of sins that we have engaged in mm -hmm. now today's lesson wednesday's lesson looking at crucibles of purification and the the verse jeremiah 9 verse 7 here says therefore thus says the lord of hosts behold I will refine them and try them for how shall I deal with the daughter of my people? It says, if the spirit of God brings to your mind a word of the Lord that hurts you, you can be sure that there is something in you that he wants to hurt to the point of its death. Mm. This is Poignant. interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. So, uh, there's something in you that he wants to hurt to the point of its death, mm -hmm. right? Uh, what does, what, purification, what, what is purification? And if we were to just uh, Google the, the term purification, mm -hmm. um, we could, it, it's a noun and it has to do with the removal of contaminants mm -hmm. from, from something, mm -hmm. um, so the process of making something spiritually or ceremonially clean, mm -hmm. right? And just looking at this, you can say God would want us to be pure, mm -hmm. right? And if we look in, in some of the, the early books of the Bible, there are purification rituals and, and all mm -hmm. of that, that, you know, help us to understand the need to be pure, mm -hmm. right? But at the very heart of it, what, what is it that he's trying to make us um, free of? What contaminant is there that is sin? Sin. Very mm -hmm. good. At the very heart of it mm -hmm. is, is sin. Mm -hmm. um, the quote that was mentioned above, how do we understand it? And from our own experience... How can we explain it? And we go back to the quote. If the Spirit of God brings to your mind a word of the Lord that hurts you, you can be sure that there is something in you that he wants to hurt to the point of its death. Mm -hmm. um, how have we experienced such in our own lives? Um, was it some illness? Um was it some financial challenge that we experienced? Was it some marital issue? Was it some other family issue that we would have been faced with mm. um, to grab our attention? Because um, perhaps we were not focusing on God and God would use these opportunities to draw our attention to him. I'm thinking also of a state of mental unease about mm. something because how this phrase here, um, the spirit of God brings to your mind a word mm. that hurts you. Mm. So uh, maybe it doesn't have to be um, a physical expression, mm. but it could be your conscience mm -hmm. that is, you know, saying to you, hey, mm -hmm. you know, what you're doing is, is wrong or, you know, we need to fix this area up. 
um, mm -hmm. and you know to that extent as well. Mm -hmm. So I I think that yes, we can have situations that you know require that internal uh, mm -hmm. look, you know, for mm -hmm. things that we may need to to work on. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah 9, 7 to 16 says, God says that he will refine and test or melt Judah and Jerusalem. What two reasons does God give for this? And how will the refining happen? So let's look at Jeremiah 9 verses, I think about 13, right? 13 to, to 15. 13 to 15. Um, let's see if we can pull that one up. All right, so 13 says, um, And the Lord said, Because they have forsaken my law, which I have mm -hmm. set before them, and have not obeyed my voice, nor walked according to it. Um, but they have walked, verse 14, now, according to the dictates of their own hearts and after the bells which their fathers taught them um, verse 15 therefore thus saith the lord of hosts i will feed them this people with wormwood and give them the water of gall to drink no mm -hmm. i've heard of bitter gall <laughs> that mm -hmm. can't be something pleasant there um verse 16 i will scatter them among the gentiles whom neither they nor their fathers have known, and I will send a sword after them until I have consumed them. Uh, oh. That's 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 rough. Mm -hmm. that, that is rough. Mm -hmm. Remember now, he's talking about his people. Mm -hmm. You know. So when yeah. we have disobeyed God's laws, we have turned away from Him, forsaken Him, then He is going to um, show us. <laughs> with these consequences mm -hmm. feed us with food of wormwood mm -hmm. and water of gall mm -hmm. um, not a very pleasant meal there at all mm -mm. not at all not at all sound like a good washout that's right yes yes a purging yeah a purging so to speak <laughs> god's refining and testing involves drastic action these are perhaps three reasons why refining and testing may feel like a crucible First, we experience pain as God allows circumstances to bring our sin to our attention, that, that mental awareness. Mm -hmm. A little earlier, Jeremiah unhappily writes, The bellows blow fiercely to burn away the lead with the fire, but the refining goes on in vain. And the wicked are not purged out. You use that word before, purged. Thus, Sometimes drastic action is needed in order to get our attention. You know, when I read this, mm -hmm. you know, the story of David came to mind mm -hmm. when David put Uriah at the front of the battle mm -hmm. um, because he wanted to cover up his sin. Mm -hmm. And Nathan was the one who exposed it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, I think that sin was brought forcefully to David's mind and he was really, really... Mm -hmm. Um, perturbed mm -hmm. by it, you know. Right. Um, something uh, jumped out at me too. Um, drastic action to get the attention. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you ever heard someone saying that sometimes God has to put you on the back mm -hmm. so that we can look up? Mm -hmm. You know. So sometimes somebody might be going through uh, a trial. Mm -hmm. uh, some illness or something and mm -hmm. they can't move they mm -hmm. just have to, to, mm -hmm. to lay down mm -hmm. and this is the opportunity time now to reflect to reflect mm -hmm. and to, to look to, to god it says mm -hmm. here second we experience anguish as we feel sorrow for the sin we know clearly or we see clearly as in the situation with with david you just mentioned um third we experience frustration as we try to live differently it can be quite uncomfortable and difficult to keep choosing to give up the things that have been so much a part of us. Some things to think about. Think about the sins that you struggle with. 
If God were going to refine and test you today, how might he do it? What action could you take now to deal with this before God would need to take drastic steps hmm. with you as he did with Israel? <laughs> um, so, can I do the reflection early before God um, cause you for lay down on your back? Yes. Um, but again, food for thought is it requires some amount of introspection for us to come to a realization for our own selves. Um, so again, thanks. Thanks again. We have come to the end of Wednesday's lesson. Thanks again for joining in. Um, hope that you were blessed from this discussion. And let us be mindful that God uses these crucible experiences for different reasons. And in Wednesday's lesson, he is trying to use our experiences to purify us. For the way marks the great prophetic way.